with you this morning. <clears throat> or if you're listening by radio, <clears throat> watching over the internet, or listening on CD or cassette. Hallelujah. One of the many avenues the Lord has opened for us to take His Word. <clears throat> Go with me to James, the first chapter, and about the 14th verse. Going to talk some, about something this morning that we probably haven't touched on in a long, long time. Hallelujah. And I'm joking with you. The Bible says in James, the first chapter, the 14th verse, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brought, bringeth forth death. And then he would say these words that let us know exactly who it was at the time he was speaking to. Of course, the principle that he was talking about and sharing here applies to every man. But in this circumstance, as I was talking with Pastor Brad yesterday down here to the armory, the biggest part of the New Testament, although there are parts in there, of course, that are written to the lost, you know, as a, as a means of salvation, the biggest part of it, or the largest percentage of it, maybe I should put it that way, was written to the church. Amen? And we're so quick sometimes as the church to read Scriptures like that and think, you yeah, He's talking to that drunk. He's talking to that prostitute. He's talking to that old sinner boy out there that won't surrender his life to God. But James would clear the air a little bit when he would say, Do not err, my beloved brethren. So he let us know pretty quick there who it was exactly he was talking to. And he was warning them that the effect or the end result of sin is the same for you as it is for everyone else as it has been all the way since the beginning and before that, it's the same. We have learned over the last few weeks that the results of sin are the same for everyone. And that Scripture right there proves that. We have learned that repentance or confession is not just for the one who needs the born again experience, who, need, who needs to be saved by the blood of Jesus and that kneels at an old-fashioned altar and begins to repent and begins to confess and say, I've sinned and I've been a drunkard, I've been a whoremonger, I've stolen, I've cheated, I've lied. Whatever the case may be, I'm a sinner, be merciful unto me. We've learned that not only is repentance and prayers of confession for those who do not know the Lord whenever they come to Him by way of the cross, but it is also for us, the born-again believer. And we learn this very simply. You see, God's Word ain't hard to understand. Sure, there's some of it we read and we walk away scratching our head, but as Brother Hinton used to say, don't throw it in the trash can, put it on the shelf. Sooner or later, God will reveal it to you. Amen? John 1 and 9, 1 John 1 and 9, teaches us this when He says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. There He comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Umbrella and all. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, we know that John was saved. Born again. Numbered with one of the twelve. Amen? There in the day of Pentecost in the upper room, when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they all began to speak in tongues. Yet later on, after He's saved, after He's filled with the Holy Ghost, after He is anointed of God, called by Jesus, and after He has cast out devils, laid hands on the sick and saw them recover, after He sees the fruit of the Spirit working in His life, we find Him, who without a doubt is a born-again believer, Brother Slee said, if we confess our sins... Do you hear that? There's some powerful words right there. If we. Amen. That means He's including Himself. All right. If we confess our sins, right. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Wow, ain't that great? Amen. Ain't it good to know this morning that Brother Sleeps, when you mess up, and you do, because right. we all do, amen, amen, that when you confess your sins, and you say, I messed up, Lord. Forgive me. 
His forgiveness is ready, willing, and waiting on you. Amen? Come on. Ready to forgive. Come on. His mercy is new every morning. Amen. And if we confess our sins, so we learn this, we learn that confession is not just for those as some teachers will as some preachers will teach to you today, and some teachers will teach to you as well. They will tell you that you don't need to be conscious of sin any longer. You don't need to repent any longer. You don't need to confess your sins any longer. You can just do anything as long as it feels right to you. Go ahead and do it. Amen. I'm sure it felt right to Samson while he was lying with Delilah, amen, but the end result was the same for him as it will be for us today. Amen. That's true. Brother Dave, you missed my introduction. I told him we're going to talk about something we hadn't talked about in a long time. <laughs> but we've been learning some things, amen? Come on. I like to learn things. Come on. I like to see things in a different light than I've ever seen them before. I love it when I sit down at the desk and I begin to open up the old book and I read something that I know I've read a hundred or a thousand times, yet that day something jumps up off of that page and smacks me right in the forehead and I see it for the first time. I see it in a different light. I see it from a different angle. I see it from another panoramic view and I get something out of it that I ain't never got before. Amen. That's the way God's Word is. Amen. Amen. When you begin to study to show yourself approved to workmen that needeth not to be ashamed. I like what Brother Brad said yesterday. It blessed my soul the preaching that he did. He said that whenever a preacher gets up and begins to expound on the Word of God and begins to share with you the message that God's given him, we're not doing it for us. Yeah. See, God gave this to me already. It's already been quickened to my soul, but now I'm trying to give to you what He has given to me because I know it's as good for you as it is for me. Amen? If it's good for what ails me, I know it's good for what ails you. Because we all made out of the same old ball of mud. Amen? That's right. Hallelujah. We're all of like passion. We all have weaknesses in our life. Oh, Brother Billy, you don't mean it. Oh, yes, I do mean it. Every one of us have weaknesses. Amen? Every one of us have a problem. That's right. And every one of us, but see, every one of us have different problems. Really comes back to the same root. But all of us have problems, but there ain't one cure for them. Amen? Amen? It's the same cure as it's always been from the beginning of time. Hallelujah. Whenever Jesus Christ, John said, this very same writer that said if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, stands on the Isle of Patmos. He has been set aside by, by the, the powers that be. He's been excluded there. He's been put out to pasture. Amen? Put somewhere where they thought He couldn't do any more damage to their religious mess that they had. Yet He stands on the Isle of Patmos and He says, I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day and I heard a voice and I turned around to see and He saw that crucified one, that resurrected Savior. And Jesus said, you write it down. The things I begin to speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. This same John yeah. said, I saw a lamb. Yeah. As it had been slain since Calvary? Yeah. That ain't what he said. From the foundation of the world. That lets me know this thing goes way back farther than when Jesus was 33 and a half years old. Amen. Come on. This lets me know that somewhere in eternity past. Yeah. The son laid down his wheel yeah. and he said, I'll go and I'll die for David Fentress. I'll go and I'll die for Billy Douglas. I'll go and I'll die for Sleece Butler. Yeah, I know that the world is going to spit on me. They're going to mock me. They're going to crucify me. But I'll still go and I'll die for them. Amen. Not only that, I'll use the last breath in my body and the last strength I have to cry out for their forgiveness and say, Father, forgive for they know not what they do. Come on, preach. The same John yeah. said, if we confess our sins, yeah. if we, I wish I could get some of the television preachers to tune me in this morning. I wish I could get some of those that had been, you know, they've been enlightened. Yeah. 
They've been enlightened and they've learned so much that they don't even have they don't have to live right no more. Yeah. Amen. Come on. They don't have to they don't believe in nothing no more. There is no line no more. There is no line to cross. It's all been blurred so much that you can't tell which side of the fence you're on. Amen. On. Hallelujah. I wish I could get some of them to me in this morning. Come on, breathe. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. That's, right. That's powerful, isn't it? Amen. Well, when you're talking about being able to sink your teeth into some word that'll get you home. Yes. If you just realize today that when you confess your sin, yeah. when you ask for forgiveness, yeah. his blood will cleanse you. Thank his God. blood will wash you. Right. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the same thing that saved you is the same thing that's going to get you across the finish line. Amen. If you think you can get saved at the foot of a cross and then get up and go and, and go forth and travel in your own strength and in your own ability, you're going to find out you're going to fall and not be able to rise again. But if you realize today that your foundation, that that your hope, that your peace is found in the finished work of Calvary, then you know when you fall, hallelujah, you can get back up and knock the dust off and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me I failed you. Help me to go on a little bit farther down the road. Come on. Begin to confess. Come on, say it. Those sins. Amen. True. True. Oh, it's old time preaching right there. Hey, Amen. That's good. Hallelujah. Keep on. We have learned that unconfessed sin will grow like a weed. Yes, sir. Or a cancer in your life. Come on. Until finally it reigns right. in your mortal body. Yes, sir. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. We learn from Romans 6 and 16 that the Apostle Paul teaches us, he says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield your servants to yourselves servants to obey, yeah. his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, yeah. amen, oh. or of obedience unto righteousness. Yeah. So we've learned that you can become a slave to sin. That's right. We have learned through some of the pictures that God has shown us. Yeah. And you may be out there today and you may think, wow, I wish I'd have got in on some of this. we got good news for you. Right. we got it on video and we got it on CD and cassette. All you got to do is ask us. We'll give it to you. Amen. But we've learned through example after example yeah. of people that we see in the Word of God, yeah. of people that you see in the world, what sin leaves behind. Come on. Amen. How many examples do we need? Um, How stupid are we? How in the world can we think you can play with fire and not get burned? How in the world can we think that we can dabble in sin and not suffer any consequences thereof? If you allow unconfessed sin to go in your life without acknowledging it, without ever taking it to the foot of the cross, without ever saying, God, here I am! Wash me afresh and anew. You'll find that that thing will begin to grow It'll begin to get out of control. Come on. And that which you thought at first you could control now controls you. Right. We've learned all of that. Wow, we've learned a lot of things these past few weeks, haven't we? Yes, sir. Listen to this. <clears throat> we learned last week that Samson didn't even realize that the Spirit of God was gone from him until uh, it was gone. Right. He got up from the bed of Delilah and he said, I'll shake myself as I've done at other times. Yeah. I've sinned before and God's presence was still on me. Right. I've sinned. See, that's the way a lot of people are. Amen. They think because I can feel the Spirit of God, I must still be okay. Amen. Till one day they can't feel the Spirit of God no more. Right. Samson gets up, he shakes himself, and the Bible says that he wist not. Yeah. 